Hello guys and welcome to this our video on walks, trails, paths, circuits and cycles and yes how to look down because who's going to remember this. My name is Darren from mathsguru.com and it's a delight and a pleasure to have you watching this video. Now before I start do me a favour click subscribe, go to my YouTube channel if you're not already there and subscribe. All right turn off notifications you don't want to be spammed by some lunatic teaching maths. When you click subscribe, it just shows me that people are watching. Nothing more, nothing else. I get nothing more than a warm, fuzzy glow to know that you are watching. And it does me a huge favor. So please do that. But otherwise, hey, you watch the video that's part of the General Maths Units 1 and 2 course. And if you're not doing General Maths Unit 1 and 2 and you're watching around the world, it should still be useful. Now, as you can see behind me, I'm going to be looking at what a walk is, a trail, a path, a cycle, and a circuit. And these are really important terms, not for just this year, but next year as well. And as I've said in all of my videos, you, you've seen them, you, mathsguru.com, with the downloadable notes. Yeah, yeah, the notes behind me, they're all downloadable. But as I've said over and over again, have your summary book near you. Print off the notes that I will write all over now. Have them in your summary book. Anybody who does that is going to smash this topic. I promise you, you cannot go wrong. It is all just stuff. But anyway, enough about that. As I've said in the previous lesson, what do we do? We, uh, we're basically building a lot of language. It really gets funky pretty soon, but now it's just, let's get used to our language. Let's just have the nice, easy, fun lessons. Put it in your summary book, all right? Now, I'm gonna say now, I never remember these. I don't know why, probably old age. I'm 147 years of age, I know. Good skincare, yes? No. British, great skin. Living in Australia, don't go out in the sun. <sighs> But the point of it is, I can't remember these. Why should you be expected to? Put it in your summary book, have it there, so useful. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of this makes sense when we talk about a walk. So I'm gonna talk about walks and paths and cycles. Now, the important bit for you guys is to notice this section here. A walk is a sequence of edges linking successive vertices that connects two different vertices in a graph. Okay, now, I've got an e-scooter. Can you imagine it? Rrr, along on my little 25 kilometer an hour with my little helmet. I look like a complete loser. Don't answer that. Thank you very much. But I don't have to walk anywhere anymore, you know, and so probably going to, as I say here, look like Mr. Stay Puffed, the marshmallow man from Ghostbusters. Hold on a moment. You've not seen the original Ghostbusters. Stop, 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 stop. Flick off YouTube, watch Ghostbusters, come back. It is amazing. But anyway, now they're not walking, but I should walk more. We should all walk more. And as you can see here, I've got a mathematical version of a walk. Now again, a walk is a sequence of edges linking successive vertices that connect two different vertices in a graph. Basically, it means I'm gonna head out my door and I'm gonna walk along roads and I don't care if I repeat the roads and I don't care if I go to places more than once. I'm just going for a walk. And the great thing is, here is a brilliant example, right? So there, what's happening is I'm starting at gate one, I'm going down to the bridge, I'm going along to Fern Gully, I'm gonna go down to gate two, and then I'm gonna to go to the old tree. Oh, flipping heck, I've left my phone at Fern Gully. So I'm gonna go back down that edge and I'm gonna end up back here. So G1 to B to F to G2 to T to G2 to F, that is a walk. I'm just randomly heading all over the place. And again, what I said there was important. We can actually describe this using a sequence of letters. And that's important for general mass, right? So in this situation, we'd say G1, arrow, B, arrow, F, arrow, G2, arrow, what did I get to there? T, arrow, G2, and then arrow to F. That's brilliant. You write that down in an exam and it'll explain to people, oh, they've just gone on a walk. So that's a walk. What do we move on to next? Hmm, a trail. Now, as we work through these, the difference is whether you can repeat edges. Going back to this one again, what we noticed was that we repeated some edges. This edge here was repeated and that edge there was repeated and that's perfectly okay in a walk. Let's look at the bold section first now for heading along a trail. Yes, now the smell of the great outdoors. And again, I'm British, living in Australia. Who does the outdoors? There are bugs and flies. If you're watching this in any other part of the country, the flies here are so big, you can literally ride them, put a saddle on them and ride them, yes? And in certain parts of this strange country, they bite. What do you mean flies bite? Get a grip, <sighs> breathe. But the point of it is, I don't do the outdoors. I don't go on trails, but it reminds me of the great outdoors. Anyway, a trail is a walk with no repeated edges. Okay, it is a walk. So I'm just heading out, I'm leaving one place, I'm going somewhere else, but now I'm not allowed to repeat an edge. And notice the use of walk 
is part of the trail. So we build up it bit by bit. All right, so let's see. Great idea, I've got a diagram. So I'm going from gate one, I'm seemingly heading to the bridge, then I'm going to Fern Gully, down to gate two. I'm not repeating any edges at this moment in time. I'm going to the old tree, I'm going to the waterfall, I'm going to the bridge, and I'm finishing off at G2. Now, I repeated a vertex there. Do you remember which one I did? Well, hopefully, because I've just pointed it out there. But that B, I obviously repeated. I'm allowed to repeat vertices, just not edges when I go for a trail. So again, if I was gonna write this out using the letters, it would have been G1 to B to F to G2 to T to the waterfall to the bridge and finishing off at G2. And again, notice here, I'm not starting and ending my journey at the same place. It's not like I'm popping to Coles to buy myself some milk and go back home again. I'm literally going on holiday. I'm heading off, I'm starting at the gate of this place and I'm heading off at gate two. I don't have to start and end at the same place. That's actually coming. Little Red Riding Hood is the most disturbing book I have ever read in my entire life. Are you nuts? That girl should never be read to children. Why? Well, think about it. She says, bye, mummy. I'm off to see uh, my grandma. And mummy says, don't stray away from the path. What's the first thing she does? Ignore mother. She's ignoring her mother, bad girl, and she goes off. Now, if that's not bad enough, what does she do then? Oh yeah, she stands and <laughs> randomly in the book that I'm reading, a wolf starts talking to her. Now again, I don't know what type of psychotic trip this girl is on. If a wolf starts talking to me, I do one of two things. YouTube it, think of the, think of the vi reality, or I'd run away. And what does she do? She actually talks to the wolf. She's talking to the wolf. Right, it's got fangs. And what does the wolf tell her to do? Pick some blue flowers. Little Red Riding Hood's nuts, she picks the flowers. Then what does she do? Well, she waits a while, giving the wolf enough time to go back and actually eat Granny. We'll come back to that in a moment. Little Red Riding Hood then turns up at Granny's house, the front door is open. What does she do? Does she phone the police? No, she doesn't phone the police. Of course not. The front door is open, it's perfectly normal, isn't it? Granny's front door. She goes in the house, goes, Granny, Granny, Granny. There's no Granny. Granny's not saying, I'm here, darling, I'm upstairs, I'm in bed. Hmm. It's like the horror movies, isn't it? Where they run and they run, but they run upstairs. That doesn't make any sense to me. But <laughs> she goes to the bedroom. What does she do? She goes to the bedroom and she looks and she goes, oh, Granny, looking a bit rough. Granny didn't look rough. She looked completely different. She got facial hair. Okay, I know that some grandmothers have facial hair. She's got facial hair and teeth. All right, the wolf's not that good at disguising. He put on a flipping hat and a pair of glasses. But anyway, we go through the whole routine. And what happens? Oh yes, sensibly for a child's book, the wolf eats Little Red Riding Hood. Hmm, a little bit nightmare on Elm Street, but it hasn't finished then because the woodcutter who happens to be walking by. Now I'm a little bit confused. What does the wolf cutter, uh, sorry, the woodcutter have anything to do with Granny? I don't fully understand. What does it have to do with Granny? But the woodcutter goes into Granny's flat. I'm trying not to think about that, all right? Is he taking advantage of this woman? But he, what does he do? He goes upstairs and he goes, oh, he's not stupid. He goes, hold on a moment, there's a wolf. Not like stupid red riding and he goes, oh, Granny, don't you look a bit rough? And what does the woodcutter do? Well, in the book, he bonks the wolf on the head and <laughs> out pops Granny and Little Red Riding Hood. So we're ignoring biology as well. Don't worry about the digestive few, how on earth? But anyway, Little Red Riding Hood, don't stray from the path, my dear. Now, back to the maths. A path is a walk with no repeated vertices. A path is a walk with no repeated vertices. Oh, hold on a moment. So we're now going to a walk. So what do we have here? Well, it's a walk, I'm heading out, don't have to go where I'm going, but now I can't repeat vertices. Right, so let's just check, is this diagram gonna work? I'm going from G1, I'm going to F, I'm going to B, I'm going to W, I'm going to the old tree, and I'm finishing at G2. And again, beautiful, I haven't repeated any vertices. Now, you're gonna turn around and say, well, how do they examine this? They'll literally give you a diagram and they'll ask you, is it a walk, a path, a circuit, a cycle, a trail? And you've got to be able to work this out. Don't worry, there are ways to help. Where are we then? So if I was gonna write this out, this would be G1 to F, to B, to W, to T, to G2. 
this isn't difficult, is it? Please tell me you might find this difficult. And you are writing it in your summary book, yeah? Okay then, right, now again, oh my God, the gym. I go past the gym, I wear baggy clothes for a reason. Let's just get large, yes? <laughs> I'm not rippling under here. Do you feel a bit nauseous? Trust me, I'm 147, stop thinking about these things. I walk past the gym and do you know what I notice? No, do you know what I notice? No one is smiling. Not one person's looking happy. Why? <laughs> Why do you go to the gym? Get a grip, yeah, just get old, get fat. No, don't get fat. But the one time I have been to the gym, weirdly, I did a circuit. And hopefully you all guys know that when you do a circuit, you start and finish at the same place. Marvellous. So again, if I look at the bold bit here, a circuit is a walk that has no repeated edges and starts and ends with the same vertex. Now, that's like me leaving my house and going, all right then, I've got to go somewhere, I'm going to go somewhere else, but I've got to go back home again. So I'm starting and finishing at the same place, but I'm not repeating edges. Okay, so let's just check here. So I've got my gate, I've gone to Fern Gully, then I've gone down to, where I've gone down to? My uh, bridge. I've gone straight the way through to the waterfall, then the old tree, the gate, back to the bridge. And then I'm finishing up where I started. And again, notice there, I am not allowed to repeat edges, but I can repeat a vertex. And again, if I was to write this down, that would be G1 to, where do we go then? F to B to W to T to G2, to B, to G1. Now these things can tend to go on for quite a long time, but there we go, cyclists. I, do you know what, I write an e-scooter. E We've said this already, yeah? I am zipping along, no, no, I'm poodling along with my hat, I look like a complete idiot, all right? And cyclists are literally lapping me. And yet all the popular press at the moment is, oh, e-scooters are bad, you people are demons, you go too fast. Get a grip, cyclists go way faster than I do, right? And I saw a cyclist a couple of days ago, she was a nutter. Anyway, cycles mean something quite important in maths as well. A cycle is a walk that has no repeated vertices and starts and ends at the same vertex. So notice that a cycle doesn't repeat vertices. A circuit didn't repeat edges, all right? This is why I can't remember this stuff, all right? It is so nuanced, but, Again, another great example here, and thanks to Cambridge for letting me use your examples. You guys are amazing. Thank you so very much. What do we have here? We're starting and ending at the same vertex. So we start at gate two, we go to the bridge, we go to the waterfall, we go to the old tree, and we go back to the gate. Now again, it didn't have to do the whole thing. That was just one example of a circuit, all right? Uh, sorry, there's one example of a cycle. It doesn't have to be that. You can do whatever you like on the diagram, but this was just example. So what did we have there? We had G2 to be to W, to T, and then back to G2, because again, we have to start and finish where we ended. Now, there is a table. If you are following along with the Cambridge textbooks, there is a table here that you can put into your summary book. I personally don't really understand that table. That's probably because I'm old, but I actually prefer the diagrams and the bold bits in my summary book because it would make more sense. But it's there for completeness, just in case you might look at that and say, oh, you're a flipping idiot. That makes perfect sense. Okay, don't be insulting. No need to. And the good news is that's the end of the video. You're going, thank God for that. You done our sharp. Right, 13 minutes long. That's not bad for a video, but it's important. And it comes up again next year. Right, mate. Right, mate. Right, mate. My name's Darren, bassguru.com. Head over there, subscribe. It's all free, downloadable notes. Knock yourself out. Tell your mates, tell your friends, tell your teachers that there's this great resource there. And if not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care, guys, and please stay safe.